Hello and welcome back and that's right today I want to look at the Sonology DS3622XS plus I want to compare it against the brand new QNAP TVSH874 and I want to do it as quickly as possible. So straight away we can look at pricing between these two NATs because frankly things are all over the shop with a release difference of almost a year between the two of them unsurprisingly the pricing is somewhat all over the shop when you look at them individually. So the 3622XS Plus is knocking around for about $3,390, 280, uh, sorry, 2832 pounds and 3506 um, euros right now and that is on new egg box and amazon respectively now that is quite a straightforward pricing point because there is only one version of it something we'll talk about later on but the 8 bay version from qnap actually arrives in different configurations and because of that the pricing is a little bit more askew in dollars we are looking at between 2889 to 3885 dollars in the uk we're looking at 2409 to 300 uh, 3499 pounds and in euros 3889 euros um starting from and that's the high point uh, you can even pick it up as low as 2600 hundred dollars there what i'm saying is there is tremendous range and it's very hard to compare these two in terms of price because the range and scale of options available on the qnap side mean that there isn't really a direct point to point comparison there you can make on price but certainly it would look like the price point consistently is higher on the qnap something very rarely said here on the channel now moving things back over to the sonology what's one of the main reasons you're going to go for it unsurprisingly it is disk station manager dsm the DSM platform is still pretty much widely regarded as the best platform in network attached storage indeed when it comes to private and um, on-prem service cloud um you know when you want to have something hybrid with your cloud storage but also have something in-house with its own applications and services that are designed to replace that off third parties to create a single ecosystem DSM still does it the best you know QTS and QUTS does come down close but it's still so user friendly and the amount of development and arguably the bulk of the price tag you spend on a Synology now still goes on to DSM things like the first party applications there that range from surveillance station 9 to active backup um, suite and active backup um, with its uh, support of third party SAAS services as well as well as great con connectivity with virtual platforms um, with high Hyper V and VMware for those of you that are running um, kind of um, hypervisors or PAAS uh, platforms with all of your VMs that you want to synchronize locally as well. And the same goes if you want to use a lot of those Office 365 and Google Workspace accounts. There's also the collaboration suite internally with things like Synology Drive, Synology Chat, Synology Office, Synology Mail, on and on. Ultimately, DSM is kind of the main reason you want to go for this, but it is worth remembering that this system doesn't arrive with things like Synology Hybrid Rate on board and there's there's a slightly more uh, contentious policy towards hard drive and other third-party hardware support internally that we'll touch on later on. But bring it back to the QNAP. Let's talk about one of the reasons why the 7.4 series is making such a noise, and that is because it arrives with 12th generation Intel Core processors, starting at Pentium Gold and racking all the way up to an i9 inside there with core and thread counts that are off the freaking chain. The CPU inside this is hands down one of the most modern processors used in commercial NAS right now and I know a number of you might be watching this on laptops or PCs that are running on 11th 12th or even 13th gen Intel Core processors wondering what's the big deal well it's because those processors when they're on your client hardware your laptop or PC they're not designed for 24 7 utilization well, like they are in a NAS and finding that kind of hardware inside a NAS is actually a great deal rarer than you think and that CPU brings to the table several advantages, such as, first and foremost, integrated graphics for a number of users. Yes, you can put graphics cards inside the QNAP, but integrated graphics is going to be tremendously advantageous to a number of users out there. Don't want to use it for high end Plex Media Server. We did 8K Plex testing on this system over Christmas, and it still knocked it out. It is that CPU is really the powerhouse behind it, and notwithstanding. That it's a 2021 closing on 2022 generation cpu if you look at the i9 on top of that it also has support of pcie gen 4 architecture something we'll touch on more later on but pcie gen 4 architecture um, throughout the system means tremendous bandwidth gains internally which is then passed on to each of the individual components internally which means there is just more pipe for you to push water through when it comes to any individual client hardware inside this system overall but 
If we're going to talk about client hardware, we can talk about one of the weirdest things in the room, and that is 10GBE and the fact that this system, Synology, the people that have generally been a little bit dicey when it comes to including 10 gigabit Ethernet and greater than gigabit Ethernet on a lot of their desktop systems, have lumped two of them on this. This 12 base system has got two 10 GBE ports on there. Number of you might have wondered, by the way, why I'm comparing a 12 base and an 8 base. Simply because they're in the same price bracket and targeting the same kind of user. The number of you, when you look at how much you've got to spend on this product, are looking at these two devices. And those two 10 GBE ports on this are some future proofing that I'm in terms of hardware. I'm very surprised that Synology went down. I would have definitely thought this would have done that. To put that into perspective, Although this system does support 10 GB upgrades, only the i9 version, the ridiculously top-end expensive one, arrives with them by default. And you only get one port. Oh no, you do actually get two ports by default there, I should say. But it's the idea that this default model from Synology has 10 GB by default. The QNAP has got a couple of 2.5 GB ports versus the 1 GB ports that are on this spot. 10 GB off the bat when you're talking about this kind of bandwidth on this number of drives is going to be hugely advantageous. And I would argue, <coughs> just had a coughing fit, I've just got to remove that, maybe add 10 more seconds to the clock. Even though this arrives with that 2017 Xeon inside, which is me, the 10 GBE kind of makes up for it there in terms of the value for money, it has to be said. Now, what can this do to counter that point? There is, of course, that CPU you mentioned, but one of the things I uh, said I would touch on there is how that PCIe Gen 4 bestows its uh, impression on this. And one of the things it really helps with is the fact that it has two PCIe Gen 4 x 4 M2 NVMe slots inside. Those slots allow you to install SSDs that can give you between um, 6 and up to 7, 7,500 megabytes per second throughput. And those two bays inside can be used for storage, they can be used for caching, they can be used for QT. There is just tremendous abilities towards those two slots inside, allowing you to have two super fast drives inside and having the main storage base to be utilized for your warm and cold storage. And a lot of you editors or those of you that are going to be running 4K and 8K post-production are really going to see the advantage of having this super fast area of storage internally working in conjunction with the more cost effective but slower SATA storage base there on the front. So again, fantastic internal performance off the bat, fantastic external performance off the bat, but both of them can be scaled accordingly. It's just a shame that the M2 NVMe slots inside this, although they're Gen 3, which is still pretty fast, can only be used for caching. But how does it count at that point? Well, as mentioned earlier on, this is a 12 bay versus an 8 bay, but it doesn't end there. Because this system can have its storage scaled up by attaching two um, 12 gigabit SAS connected expansion devices in the DX1221. I might have got that number wrong there, but it is two 12 bay expansions you can bolt on to allow you to have up to 36 drives of storage in its lifetime down the road there. Now, the QNAP can be expanded. There are a lot of QNAP expansions out there. I've mentioned it before, 2 by 4 by 8 by 12 by and you can attach two expansions to this, in some cases more depending on the configuration you go for. However, those expansions fall into the following categories. They are attached either by USB, which will then throttle you to 500 megs or 1000 megs, which again, isn't so bad, because remember, it's only 12 gig SAS on that. But they, uh, there's JBOD ones, there's hardware RAID uh, attached ones. When you go to the bigger enclosures, however, you start looking at ones that have got cards that you have to install inside the system, which is great to make sure you get performance with expansions then crossing into the two, three, four, five thousand megabytes per second bandwidth. But then you have to occupy a PCIe card, and it's less simplistic. So, and again, we will touch on that word again, but. With the QNAP there, expandability is just easier to and smoother to do with just bolting on the two expansions immediately in the system, just embracing it straight away, as opposed to the slightly more convoluted, complex, and slightly harder to follow uh, expansion series from QNAP. There are more options, which is great, but it's by no means as fluid. But I tell you where things do uh, improve on the QNAP, moving away from fluidity and towards that open ended nature. Support of third-party hardware. On the TVS H874, like a lot of QNAPs, the range of third-party hardware support dwarfs that of the Synology. To put it into perspective, on the Synology, you've got slightly, um, I would argue, more limited options in terms of hard drive compatibility with the brand. Clearly, either indirectly or directly, 
prioritizing their own upgrades to create that ecosystem. Same goes for memory upgrades, same goes for PCIe upgrades. If you go for the compatibility lists on the Synology, there's a lot fewer items on there. Yes, people can test them and submit them to Synology, but there's just not a lot of options there with regards to supported uh, and fully compatible hardware without the system saying to you, you are using an unsupported device, you are using an incompatible device and just getting a bit shirty with you, you know? But in the case of the QNAP, there is a huge range of network upgrade cards, QNAP's own and other as well. And don't forget those QM2 cards as well. On top of that, memory upgrades. On top of that, hard drive compatibility. It doesn't have that same level of kind of limited listing there. The range is tremendous when it comes to supporting third-party hardware. Moving forward as well into USB supported upgrades there for Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, um, USB uh, utilization with USB ports on the QNAP just for supplying and supporting more client hardware. Just third-party hardware support is just grander on this device. And don't forget, there's always the slight promise, but fingers crossed we don't know for certain, about a Thunderbolt 4 upgrade card on this system down the line now. Bring it back to that technology. Now, we need to come back to that word simplicity because, frankly, this is one of the most simple systems you're going to own when you reach this scale. Normally, when you were looking at hyperscale, or enterprise class storage, that is when you've got to get your local IT admin in. That is when you've got to have an IT guy downstairs, Morris from IT Grad, just being the guy that does the job. But when it comes to these two devices, I will comfortably say this is the simpler of the two. Not only, uh, as mentioned earlier on, is DSM significantly more user-friendly, but on top of that, it's just a much easier system to set up and even purchase. The warranty, five years versus three years. The 12 beta storage part population, of course, you can part populate in both of them, but the ability to expand the RAID is a great deal easier, something we'll touch on later on. The configuration options we've already touched on there with this system only arriving in one configuration with the uh, 74 series in four, uh, six, and eight base, just spanning a number of different configurations and, and setups there. And indeed, if you are someone that wants to go for a solution that just shuts up and does its job, the fact that this arrives and is presented as a single ecosystem solution does add quite a lot to that idea of the simplicity of the platform. Remember that thing with the expansions? Plug the expansion in, you're done. It appears straight away. Same goes with PCIe upgrade, upgrade cards. Because everything's in-house, all the drivers and all the necessity and all the testing, same goes with drives and SSDs. It's just a lot simpler. So if you're willing to pay a little bit more and have a few uh, fewer options in terms of um, how you want to upgrade and scale, but at the same time, make sure things are just simple, easy, modular, done, it's going to be a better choice for you. But I tell you one thing that QNAP does bring to the party that really improves things, ZFS, Zettabyte File System. This system arrives with the choice of EXT4 or ZFS as the system configuration and its file system. The Synology arrives with BTRFS and EXT4. And I know a lot of storage purists are a little bit mm, about BTRFS because it's still a bit green behind. It's a bit green at the gills, a bit young, and people aren't. 100% committed to BTRFS. It is great for lower resource snapshot uh, creation there, shared folder recreation, file self healing, that sort of thing. It's all built in, but at the same time, ZFS has most of that anyway, and then doubles down with triple parity RAID, doubles down with faster RAID build, RAID resync, uh, RAID resilvering, and more. It also brings to the party inline data to duplication, inline data co uh, uh, compression, inline data compaction, uh, which again benefits a number of different users in a number of different ways, along with the removal of the volume layer, meaning that everything you are doing, all those shared folders, all those shared areas are going straight in the storage pool, simplifying the, uh, the build there, of the containers and therefore improving performance overall. And remember, the average hardware in this is still pretty damn banging there. So between them, when it comes to that software, as good as DSM as the overall software package is, which again, I do believe is still a little, a little bit ahead of QTS and QUTS, it's impossible to ignore the benefits of ZFS, and particularly for enterprise storage. When you look at most enterprise storage users, they are going towards ZFS, be it for TrueNAS or in-house as well. Now, going back to the Synology, another thing that's worth highlighting straight away, and I know I don't have them powered on, so you're gonna kind of have to take me at my word here, this is the quieter of the two. The DS3622XS, despite it being a 12 bay, is the quieter in operation. Now, there is caveats attached to that. If you go for larger hard drives, they're gonna make a lot of noise. And as this is a metal chassis, 
that is all going to culminate together to make a noisier operation. But then again, they're both metal, so that's not really much of a difference there. But I will say, even though this is a 12 bay, this is an 8 bay, this runs quieter. When we had the 3622XS running at the start of 2022, running a bunch of tests for all of our videos, we had this running in the background while we were making videos. Yes, it was about three meters away over there, but at the same time, we were able to remove the noise that it was making from the edit a great deal easier than when we were running the H874 towards the end of 2022 in the background. It's just a little bit noisier there. It's got more fans inside. So when I mean noisy, I don't mean like bagging rave in the 90s, but I do mean the clicks, hums and words of the hard drives and the spin of the fans is noticeable. When it comes to running them both side by side, there's just a bit more ambient noise coming from the QNAP there. But I'll tell you what else you get from the QNAP, KVM, keyboard, video, mouse. The system supports localized setup and connectivity. So what I mean by that is <clears throat> internally you're running QTS or QUTS as your software there. You can also connect to it with thousands of users simultaneously. Each of those users have got their own built-in graphical user interface. They're not all viewing the same screen. They've all got their own access point and can do all of the stuff they want to do. But simultaneously, there's an HDMI output and USB ports there that allow you to attach a keyboard, a mouse, and a visual output. And then it has a complete parallel user interface there. That graphical user interface is not text-based, is a full GUI that allows you to do things like run a virtual machine or a standalone PC on this. Remember, at the same time, it's being accessed by all of those users at once. On top of that, you can run um, surveillance uh, on this, this system with QVR Elite or QVR Pro. With QVR Pro running on this in the XT4, you get eight camera licenses there. We've already talked about that in another video. Um, as well as running things like multimedia. So if you want to have a zero latency multimedia server on this device, you can run uh, Plex Media Server or Kodi or something like that on this using first or third party app centers in order to enjoy your insane quality multimedia on this device via a local output there. Synology have not really entertained any kind of local output outs other than on some surveillance devices like the DVA 1622. But still, nonetheless, that KVM output on this and that insane hardware on this might be someone that wants to buy it, but not only take advantage of the NAS facilities, but at the same time, have some localized access in using it as a personal computer at the same time, doubling down and getting a better return on investment when going for it. But ultimately, when you're picking between these two, I think despite that 10 GB on this and despite the ZFS on this, it's still going to come down to software versus hardware because when you buy Synology NAS, it still comes down to a larger percentage of the money you lay down on the table going towards the software. And on the QNAP, it is you know, largely inarguable that you are paying more for the hardware. You're the, what you're, that money you lay down for every 100 nicker, I'd say 60 or 65 is for that hardware there inside because it is genuinely a very beefy device. And also, if you go for this, you can still scale it up in a number of ways. Whereas on the Synology, with that tighter ecosystem, if you're interested in that ecosystem and you want to fully um, surround your home or business with that single party environment to make sure everything works together as simple as possible, it is tremendously desirable. But this has been within, oh, 18 minutes. That was actually longer than I thought. This has been comparing the DS3622XS Plus with the TVS H874. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Click like if you did. Subscribe to learn more. Links in the description to their respective reviews and comparisons. Free advice section if you need help. Free community forum on Ask NAS Compares. And use the links in the description if you're going to buy one of these two and I helped you. As using those links result in a kickback from Amazon coming to us, which allows us to do what we do. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.